Good afternoon. So I hope you're all well. Um, obviously, uh, a couple of things just want to go through um, before we start. Uh, obviously, we're coming back on Monday, in theory. Um, so the, the way that we're going to lay this out is Monday, we will have a YouTube lesson, much like we've always done. Um, then Wednesday, or, or whenever your lesson is, it might be Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, um, we'll kind of ha have a lesson, we'll recap a lot of the stuff, we'll do some in-class work, we'll do probably integrate the assessment into the lesson. Obviously, it's going to vary teacher to teacher. You should kind of get your timetable in the next couple of days, I think, um, or at least by the time you come back 100%. Um, so check there, it should have all the information that you need on it. If for whatever reason you cannot come, or you're shielding, or whatever the case may be, that's fine, you know, um, we understand, but just shoot us a line so that we know, so we kind of have a vague idea of numbers as well. Um, but yeah, um, you know, looking forward to seeing you guys again, so um, that's all exciting. What is less exciting is your assessment for this week. Um, so I've uploaded this document to the upload point for the, the question. So you should have this available to you. Um, so you've got two very small questions to complete, uh, 16 marks in total. So, you know, this is the smallest one you've done in a long time. Um, two questions, the first one being, explain two possible problems with the representativeness of the sample used in the source and with reference to the source explain one advantage and one disadvantage of using qualitative data. Now you'll notice it has a source attached to it. Uh, ordinarily in your exam I really recommend that you read this thoroughly so you can draw as much information as you can from it because then you'll be using that in your essay answers. Um, you know it's it's pretty much important for every single question on the research methods paper. Uh, remember we're missing um, the 25 marker, which is the bigger one. So you're just going to do, do uh, two small questions today. So the structure for both of these is remarkably simple. Um, for some reason, I can't get that to actually get in the center of the page. But the structure is really simple for both of these. So I don't need to spend too long on it. And my suggestion is you just have a crack at it first, um, you know, and, you know, you know and, and with the feedback, kind of hone it over time. So um, number one is really straightforward. It's identifying two possible problems with the representativeness of the sample used in the source. So we have to first remind ourselves what representativeness means. Representativeness means how well your sample represents your target population. Can you generalize across your entire group that you actually want to study using the sample that you've drawn? Um, you know, for example, if I was to kind of study how well you were enjoying lockdown or how well you were enjoying the YouTube lessons, whatever it may be, and I only asked one of you and then took their opinion to represent the entirety, you know, that would be a terrible, terrible study and just, it'd be, you know, shot down. So um, we need to make sure that we are representing, representing every single group that we can. We need to make sure we've got a fair representation of ethnicities, a fair representation of genders, of ages even, of classes. So we need to make sure that we've actually got a fair cross-section of society represented in our sample. So what you want to do then is go through the source and identify two possible problems or areas where perhaps they've not really identified or represented every group. Um, so it, we've kind of got a, a few uh, issues that you can identify from the source. They start talking about ethnicity here, so maybe consider that one. Um, you know, they talk about class at the bottom. Is there any issues with geographical locations? Have they picked enough universities as the base of their study? So have a read through the source and have a go at that. Just two possible problems, link each one of those points to the source when you're explaining why it's a problem. <coughs> so second question, very simple. We need to 
explain one advantage and one disadvantage of using qualitative data. So, very simple, you basically go through one advantage, explain that in full, and then one problem, or you know, it doesn't really necessarily matter what order you put them in. So there's a, a couple of things that you want to uh, you know, include in this. You want to make sure that you link to the source, because it says it in the question, so show me where the advantage or the problem is in the source, in both paragraphs. You then want to make sure that you explain what theoretical perspective favours it or, or disagrees with it. So the way I would uh, go about doing this, and this is what I mean, is when you're talking about the advantage, well, you could say, well, interpretivists argue that qualitative data is the more valuable form of data because, and you can go into a number of reasons. You could go into Verstehen, you could go into validity, you could go into um, any kind of concepts related to interpretivism and, and micro studies, that kind of thing. Then, for the problem, you go, well, on the other hand, positivists would argue that you should not favour qualitative data because it's unreliable, it's unscientific, it doesn't allow you to make correlations, it doesn't allow you to make social facts, or loads of these issues that are, are, are brought up by this. So, you know, you can basically just link your problem or your advantage to one of the two theoretical perspectives. Um, so, have a go at that. You know, it's not going to be easy. This is only your first time doing it. Um, but if you just have a go and see what sticks, I'm, I'm sure that with our feedback, um, we can get this, you know, fairly straightforward. It's, it, they're fairly simple uh, in their layout. Um, any questions, throw them on Teams rather than email because my email is just a, a dumping ground of all sorts of stuff and I just lose everything. So... Um, just th throw me on Teams because it's all nice and neat and tidy there. I can see what's important and I'm not getting copied into loads of spam emails. So, um, other notices perhaps, um, you know, I'm catching up on, on the marking. I should be up to date um, over the weekend. So, you know, if you haven't got your end of unit test back yet, you should very soon. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, Again, let us know if you're not going to come in um, at all when college reopens. Um, and best of luck.